Where a storytelling universe as almost impossibly huge and vast as Star Wars is concerned, it's simply impossible for fans to have every single nagging question answered. Even with Star Wars having such a ludicrously large fan base, there simply isn't the capacity across its various media to resolve every last hanging narrative thread. So I am Gareth here from What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 Star Wars cliffhangers that will never be resolved. Number 10. Does Finn Become a Jedi? In the lead up to The Force Awakens release, many believed that Finn would become a Jedi, largely due to the widely promoted image of him holding a lightsaber. It wasn't to be though, and it wasn't until The Rise of Skywalker that the series flirted again with Finn being force sensitive, with several indirect implications and a running gag throughout the movie involving a secret he had to tell Rey. The film itself never reveals Finn's secret, though following its release, J.J. Abrams confirmed that Finn was indeed going to tell Rey that he was force sensitive. There it is then. This begs the question though, what next for Finn? Does he begin training to become a Jedi, or simply continue to exist as a force sensitive person? While the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special did show Finn training to be a Jedi, this also isn't canon so can't be accepted as absolute truth. Though it's reasonable to accept that Finn probably does become a Jedi, with John Boyega insisting he's done with Star Wars, we're unlikely to ever get much formal confirmation. And given how wasted Finn was in the last two films, that's a damn shame. Would you like to see Boyega return for the upcoming Star Wars film set after the events of Rise of Skywalker? And what else would you like to see go down in that flick? Well, let me know down below in the comments section, my friends. Number 9. What is Yoda's species called? Perhaps the single most agonizing and debated cliffhanger in Star Wars history is the ambiguous nature of Yoda. Namely, what species do he, Grogu, and others like them belong to? Star Wars has never given a name to Yoda's species, as has only enhanced the mystique and fan intrigue surrounding them. As such, even with Grogu being such a phenomenally popular character right now, it seems unlikely that this mystery will ever be properly resolved. After all, fans have been left hanging on the question for so long now, literally over 40 years at this point, that even the most creative and imaginative answers surely wouldn't live up to the hype. It's probably better to simply let the enigma live on forevermore. Number 8. What was Kira's ultimate fate? One of the most unexpectedly intriguing characters introduced in Solo, a Star Wars story, was Kira, the childhood friend of Han who reveals herself to be considerably cagier than expected. At film's end, she kills her Crimson Dawn boss, Dryden Voss, and heads off to Dathomir to meet with Darth Maul, which is sadly the last we've seen of her on screen. So what became of Kira? Kira's story has at least been fleshed out somewhat in a number of canon comic books, such as War of the Bounty Hunters and Hidden Empire, where Kira takes control of Crimson Dawn and plots to take down Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine in order to eradicate the Sith and Empire at the same time. Very ambitious indeed. However, Kira's plan to ensnare the duo ends up failing, and she ultimately leaves Crimson Dawn while encouraging all of its members to do the same. Kira's fate thereafter is frustratingly unknown. We know she survived to see the fall of the Empire, but that's about it really. And with Solo bombing at the box office, Disney has almost certainly inferred that big screen interest in Kira is limited at best. Maybe she'll pop up in a series though, who knows? Number 7. How was Anakin conceived? The Phantom Menace saw Anakin's mother, Shmi, reveal to Qui-Gon Jinn that Anakin's birth was the result of an immaculate conception. Ever since, fans have speculated on precisely how Anakin came to exist. For one, Qui-Gon theorizes that Anakin may have been conceived by the midichlorians themselves. Then there's the matter of the recent canon comic book, Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, whose final issue suggested that Palpatine used the Force to impregnate Shmi with the Chosen One. Some fans took this as immediate gospel, until Lucasfilm's story group creative executive Matt Martin reminded them that the panel in question is actually in Anakin's head, and was in no way intended to provide a definitive answer for Anakin's parentage. And so the matter remains a mystery to this very day, and likely always will. Number 6. Is Lando Janna's father? 
The Rise of Skywalker introduced the character of ex-stormtrooper turned resistance fighter Janna, and from the moment she was announced, many fans theorized that she might end up being Lando Calrissian's daughter. Yet the film ultimately never confirms it either way. A closing final moment between Janna and Lando suggests they will team up to find out where she came from, a scene which some mocked for in their eyes suggesting that Lando was actually hitting on her. While we can rule that possibility out, the truth of Janna's parentage remains very much up in the air. The the film's visual dictionary, released mere days after the movie, reveals that Lando's daughter was kidnapped by the First Order as a baby, and Janna's age absolutely matches up with that. Yet this is purely circumstantial and in no way confirms the two are related. Plus, given the relatively small number of black characters in the Star Wars franchise, it's pretty small-minded to make the existing ones related. And considering that Billy D. Williams is likely done as Lando in any major capacity, and there wasn't a whole lot of mainstream fanfare for Jana, it's tough to picture this thread ever being picked up again. Number 5. What did Quinlan Voss do after Order 66? Quinlan Voss made his Star Wars debut in The Phantom Menace as a then unnamed resident of Mos Espa, a background character for sure, yet a distinctive one who fans were eager to know more about. And so Voss appeared in numerous legend stories, such as Star Wars Republic, before getting name dropped in Revenge of the Sith. Voss had a more prominent showing in an episode of The Clone Wars and the brilliant 2015 canon novel Dark Disciple, establishing him as a maverick Jedi master who ended up falling by the wayside while plotting to assassinate Count Dooku. Yet after Dark Disciple, he vanished, leaving fans wondering whether or not he even survived the events of Order 66. This was mercifully resolved in an episode of the recent Obi-Wan Kenobi series, where Voss's name was found carved in Tala Durith's safe house on Mapuzo, confirming that he did indeed survive long after Order 66 and the rise of the Empire. But what did Voss get up to next? Today, there's no canon answer, and while it's absolutely possible we could see Voss in one of the many Star Wars Disney Plus series in production right now, namely Tales of the Jedi, Star Wars has such a deep roster of neglected characters that you also shouldn't count on it sadly. Fingers crossed though, eh? Number 4. How did Maz get Luke's lightsaber? In The Force Awakens, Rey receives Anakin slash Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from Maz Kanata, and when Han Solo asks her where she got it, Maz simply offers the enigmatic response a good question for another time. Fans very reasonably assume this would eventually be addressed by the end of the sequel trilogy, but alas, it never was. Now, the 2020 canon comic Star Wars No. 4 did shed some light on what happened to the lightsaber after Luke lost it on Cloud City by revealing that an Ugnaught picked it out of the trash. But how how it made its journey from there to Maz is still anyone's guess. The most obvious answer is that it was sold and traded down the line until it reached Maz. Yet given her cagey retort to Han, it sure seemed like she had a juicier answer than I found it in a pawn shop. With the lightsaber being buried at the end of The Rise of Skywalker though, it feels like the series has not so symbolically closed the book on this whole chapter. Number 3. What Happened to Broom Kid? The Last Jedi ended with a closing final glimpse of a young boy, one of the farthest stable hands at Canto Bight, using the Force to move a broom while cleaning the stables. This led many fans to assume that the boy, later given the name of Tamiri Blag, would reappear in The Rise of Skywalker. But that ultimately wasn't the case now, was it? In reality, the scene was really just underlining the notion that anyone had the potential to be a Jedi, no matter their standing in life or their family name, following on from the eventually retconned revelation that Rey's parents were nobodies. Even with The Rise of Skywalker ultimately ignoring or downplaying so much of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson almost certainly never intended to follow up on this character specifically. All the same, that does nothing to change the fact that many would love to see what Black got up to after the events of The Last Jedi. But considering how hilariously shoehorned Black's presence would seem in a future Star Wars movie, his fate might be better off left up in the air. Number 2. How did Snoke become Supreme Leader? Supreme Leader Snoke was initially hyped up as the sequel trilogy's big bad, and while fans understandably expected to learn much more about him over the course of the trilogy, Ryan Johnson promptly put the kibosh on this when he was suddenly killed off midway through The Last Jedi. Though The Rise of Skywalker revealed that Snoke was a life form genetically engineered by Palpatine, who effectively installed him as a puppet leader while he skulked around in the shadows. How exactly did this all, you know, happen? It remains unclear why those behind the First Order would accept 
prevent the mysterious Snoke as their master, or the means through which Palpatine schemed to insert him as the head of the whole organization. This is certainly an issue exacerbated by the rather unpersuasive and vague direction of Snoke's backstory in The Rise of Skywalker, and given the wildly polarized response to the film, it's far more likely Disney will simply leave the finer details of Snoke's past a mystery forevermore. Number 1. Where is Cara Dune? Cara Dune was one of the standout characters in the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, enough that Disney reportedly intended to center their planned spin-off series Rangers of the New Republic around her. But after Karana was dismissed from The Mandalorian due to her controversial social media posts, Dune was swiftly written out of the show. In the third season's first episode, Grief Karga mentioned that Kara had left her post as Marshal of Navarro and was now working for the New Republic Special Forces. And that's seemingly all she wrote. While vaguely suggesting that Dune is still out in the galaxy doing good work is absolutely preferable to her being suddenly killed off, this was very clearly a case of Disney sweeping the whole matter under the rug. And while it's possible that she could be recast one day, and her adventures could continue in animation with a new likeness and voice actress, the manner in which she was quickly written out of The Mandalorian suggests that's probably not gonna happen. Kara's off doing her own thing, and fans probably shouldn't expect the matter to ever be elaborated upon unfortunately. But at least Dune's presence in the show was fun while it lasted. And Kara's time on screen now looks to be very much Dune. A thank you. And that's our list. Know of any other Star Wars cliffhangers that will never be resolved? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you're into this sort of stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic Star Wars articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Star Wars. May the Force be with you as always. Cheers for spending some time with this particular Padawan today. Now go and check out some more What Culture Star Wars goodness on the channel and have yourself the best. Best of days. See you soon!